start. There he goes. We're on Restoration Island, which is um, a private island owned by Dave. If you want to do the same, then we suggest you contact him as well. Don't just come showing up. It's, you know, he doesn't want people just showing up out of the blue on his doorstep. So, um, yeah. We were sort of hoping to get out to the islands and reefs off here, but that's not going to happen with this wind. Um, we also had a couple of motor problems yesterday that we couldn't rev the motor more than, you know, a certain RPM. So we need to have a look at that and work out what that is as well. There's a problem with the motor, um, so we're going to have a look. You know, it idles perfectly. When we try and give it a bit more power, it, it misses. Not my forte. Not super mechanical, and I've definitely never looked at that motor with the cowling on, so... Flicking lures, you just gotta get them right in there, all up in there. My opinion, something's wrong. <laughs> Any in the fridge? This is like Stevie's car in season one. No maintenance, no love. I'm sick of turning up and just having to deal with this rubbish. For the feelers out there, I'm looking for a good bunch of guys who want to go fishing, have a have a good time, and have some reliable gear. <laughs> so the verdict there is sort of that we don't really know what's going on, but we've sort of isolated it down to one part and a vacuum leak or something there. So there's a solenoid on the side of the motor which we think may not be actuating. I mean, we're not mechanics, we don't really know, but at least we can ring up with that information, ask the mechanic and say, hey, look, this is what's happening. Yeah, I think we just need to speak to Dave, see if we can use his internet, phone. Um, if not, we've got the sat phone. You can call someone. But um, yeah, it'd be nice if we could use his internet and I got a reception. A phone reception? A mobile reception? <laughs> you have? Uh, yeah. Oh, you're just telling us this now? Well, I thought you knew you had it as well. I just assumed everybody knew. Out here in the wild, remote Cape York. Yeah, oh, we'll yeah. just use our phone. You just hear phone ringing yeah. over there. You're like, go on, <laughs> so remote. Oh, <laughs> uh, fuck. Change of tactic. You know, we go this guy. G'day, Michael. My name's Steve. How's it going? Yeah, mate, you got me? Yeah, you got me, Michael? Hello. G'day Michael, my name is Stephen, how's it going? I had my um, boat in there to get a service um, a couple of weeks ago, a, um, a yellow fin with a 150 Mercury on the back. We were away on a trip, we went to rev the motor up and it won't um, get over about 3000 RPM. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, no, I honestly haven't checked that. Yeah, okay, righto, yeah, 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 no, mm. okay, gotcha, yep, yeah, righto, yeah, gotcha, okay, righto, thanks, Michael, see ya. I think we know what it is. So he said just unplug that and plug it in again, it might reset itself. <laughs> Looks fine. We didn't get very far there, didn't fix it. So. There's a little TLC, but at the moment it's in better condition than Stevie's. We're gonna wait for high tide, dig out a bit of a channel, and we'll float her out and we'll be out fishing tomorrow. <laughs> Dave's big boat. I think if uh, you want to find out more about that, you have to read uh, Dave's story, The Millionaire Castaway. He's got a book, and uh, I think he mentions that in there. Yeah.
biggest mullet you've ever seen. How about going at him? I got one. Far out. Have a look at him. Send him out live, you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually scouting around trying to find mullet for bait. And uh, saw a little fin, thought it was a shark. Then I thought maybe not. Threw the net on it. Gigantic mullet. So he'll do for bait. Have a look at him. That is the most ginormous mullet. It's the biggest fish of the trip, mate. Watch your technique. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw it really tight over. Did you see it? Yeah. So we uh, got back on the phone to Mick at High Tune and um, it sort of explained what was going on and mentioned that our trim sensor was reading back the front and he said it could just be possibly um, put in backwards. So pull it out, turn it around 180 degrees. Looking at that piece of plastic there, you'd think that you'd mount it that way. It seems to work when you mount it around that way. And uh, it seems to have done the job. So I think for now, we're just gonna fish from the shore and wait for the tide to turn. So Dave, he's got us doing a couple of chores. And uh, he, he's talking about an anchor that he has a vague idea where it is. It's under the sand. He'd love to find it again. Just so happens, I bought a little metal detector. He's narrowed it down to an area on the beach of about 20 metres by six or seven metres. So if we square that out, we might be able to just quickly buzz over it and see how we go. Yeah, I'm supervising Mark. Someone's got to do it, eh? It's like swap otherwise. Um, we had, I think, about four hits. We got a little bottle cap, a big sheet of corrugated iron, and um, anchor we were looking for. That he got buried a while ago. Good fun, though. We're looking for my thongs all morning. Um, and uh, just with the coral and stuff, it's a bit rough. And I've found one. So I don't know if they got left in the uh, tidal zone. But uh, hopefully the other one shows up. I've lost my thongs. I thought they were in the boat. They're not. I don't know if I've worn them up here or not. I brought spares this time though. They're just in the car though probably, eh? Yeah, they've yeah. got to be around. Sure. I've got my thongs, you know. We're about to go and walk the rocks and probably find some oysters, hopefully catch some fish. Feeling good. It's a good day. So we've just put up this little spot here and there's like a heap of oysters all around the rocks. Um, we're heading out to the main headland to go for a fish. So the tide's coming in, so we thought we'd better just pick a few of them now and we'll just stash them up the top above the tide and that way on the way back we can grab them. So there's just tons of these uh, black lip oysters all over the rocks here. The amount down here is ridiculous. You can just, you know, thousands of them just sort of walking around not trying to find oysters, but trying to find ones that you think are big enough to pick. So yeah, really cool. Son of a bitch. It's always gonna happen, picking oysters, I'm gonna get a colouring for it. Found two thongs over in there, just in the back here, there's a bit of a, I suppose must be a bit of an eddy or a catch where all the rubbish rubs up, washes up in. My feet were a bit sore from the walk, so 
slip them on, work a charm. First cast, got me uh, lure stuck on the reef out there. So, it was basically a waste of a walk for me. I didn't bring a spare. Me and Baxter spoke about it on the way and thought, oh, surely it won't get snagged straight away. Pretty shit spot, really. I think it's a shit spot we should leave. Ooh, black spot. Cod King, strikes again. Beautiful black spot cod. Actually really good eating. Beautiful release. <laughs> so Mark's just opening the coconut. Because uh, later on we're just going to um, open up a few um, coconuts and put a bit of rum in, have a few pina coladas on the beach. I'm just de-husking a coconut, I've never done one before. So we got, there's a spike here, we're on an island, plenty of coconuts. Um, yeah. Even in that first yeah. attempt yeah. I learned a lot. I, I've uh, de-husked a coconut before but never with a spike. I don't know if we're even doing it right. Well there's coconut trees. I don't like the hair on the outside, I like them like that there. Yeah. If we're going to judge nuts, you'd have to go to the expert nut judger. Phil, what do you reckon about nuts? <laughs> Bit wild, man. Oh. Mark just nutted on the camera. <laughs> Mark's out there rigging up a few rods, and we're just going to troll around, sort of just until just before sunset. Um, hopefully, the boat motor's working. We, we haven't actually tested it. We think we fixed the problem, but we couldn't test it because it was dead low tide. So. Really happy about the outboard working. Um, we're, yeah, it's a shit fight. Like to bring something big boat like that this far, and then not have it work, it really sucks. So to get that fixed is uh, great, and we can do whatever we want with it, and we're not worried about it breaking down. We know the problem's fixed, so yeah, it's good. Oh no, Dingo has stolen my thongs. They're Baxter's thongs. Yeah, you haven't found them. Yeah, Dingo stole my thongs. Still I think we do. We had a bunch of coconuts ready to go. Pre-husked, beautiful. Someone left them below high tide line. I mean, I don't want to point too many fingers. <laughs> All ten fingers. I'll just point one. No one else noticed that. Oh, I'm telling them. It's a team effort. Oh, 